Welcome to part two in my series on inflation. This is where I tell you exactly what I'm doing to prepare myself for inflation and to protect my money. Hope you enjoy. All right, we're back after a brief intermission. Had to get some water. Keep yourselves hydrated, everybody. Okay, so where were we? Okay, uh, yeah, now that we're all scared of our money burning up, I can tell you what it is I'm doing. I'm actually, right now, I'm converting a large part of the cash I have and I still make today into four specific assets. We're going to smart from the uh, start from the uh, small budget and small savings kind of point of view, okay, and work our way up. And we're starting with the asset that I actually started collecting more than 11 years ago, and that's silver, okay? So if you're wondering if silver makes sense to buy in 2021, just take a look at this chart. It shows the price of silver over time. And like with most investments, there are peaks and valleys. And that's why it's key really not to invest all of your money at one time. More on that in a moment. So if we take the price of silver back in 1997 and compare it versus today, you can see that not only would have you, you have protected your cash savings in silver, but you would have actually grown it. Okay, because inflation has has really been so high. There's so much uh, money in the supply. So if we adjust the price in 1997, considering inflation, you can see actually that silver appreciated since 1997 actually by 143 percent. Not bad. And as silver is used more and more industrially, for example, maybe some of you know this, maybe some of you don't know this. But actually, silver is a key component in solar panels. The demand for physical silver, as a result, will undoubtedly increase over time. And as demand increases, the price also increases. So now, how I invest in silver is simple. I set aside a budget and I do what's called dollar cost averaging. I can't stress this enough. Listen to this part, really. With the budget I have, I buy some small silver purchases. I make, I make some silver purchases a few times spread over the year, okay? And why do I do this? I do it so if the price jumps up really high, like it did, if you look at the, at the chart at 2011, in 2011, okay, you can see it jumps up really high there for a very short period of time. It doesn't create an overall loss for me because by splitting up my purchases, what I do is I buy the average price for that year. And over time, I'm just buying the average price. So if over the average, over the long term, the price is going up, I benefit from that because I'm not buying it all at one time. So remember this part, be disciplined, okay? Don't go out and take all your savings and buy you know, whatever it is you wanna buy all at once, okay? I would never do that from my perspective, okay? I think that's a bad idea. So, uh, what's important also to keep in mind is the kind of silver you buy, okay? Um, again, I'm giving you a glimpse into what, I, what it is I do. And when investing in silver, what I always do is I, I avoid collector coins, okay? Or silverware or weird stuff like this. I see people saying, oh yeah, I bought some sterling silver from an estate sale or something. This is something that I, I avoid like the plague. What I buy, is that I, as I buy what's called bullion, bullion. And I find it, you can easily find it on Google. With a Google search, you can find dealers that are close to you. They're all over the place, okay? And these are the exact three forms of silver uh, that I buy. Uh, I actually have them here, prepared some of them here, okay? Oh, so we'll start here, okay? It's okay, you see this, this is a, this is a coin, silver coin, it's pretty bright, Hope you, hopefully you can see it, okay? So the first and favorite uh, kind of bullion, so silver that I buy, are, are coins, okay? They're easy to find from reputable dealers, and remember, reputable dealers, people who have a good reputation, the first thing you should buy before you buy the silver is buy the person who's selling it to you, okay? That's super important. They're affordable. So if, you know, if you're just at the beginning of your career or something, you're, 
Uh, I know that's the way it was for me when I was at the beginning of my career. It was very easy for me to buy these things. And they're very easy to sell later on, these kind of bullion coins, these ones, because they're issued and backed by governments. Okay? So here's an example. This is, I, this is the Silver American Eagle. This is one that I buy. And another one that I buy, this is called a Maple Leaf. Okay? These are really great coins. You can see there are numbers on them. This one has 9999. That means it's 99.99% silver. Okay? And these things are really great. Like I said, easy to find from reputable dealers and very easy to sell later on if you want to liquidate, right? Okay, where are we? Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, one thing I really want you guys to remember. When buying silver or really anything that's an investment, you know, you always have to pay a fee to the seller. They have to pay their rent for, you know, wherever it is they store this stuff or wherever it is they have their business. And the fee you'll pay on silver bullion coins is usually higher than on other forms of silver because of how recognizable they are and how easy really they are to, to sell, okay? So when selling them back to a dealer, also they will often offer you a little bit less under what the current price is, the, the spot price as it's called, so whatever silver is selling for that day. And again, that's because they have to pay their bills, all right? So that's when, when I buy bullion coins, I only buy them with the intention to keep them for a long time, for a long period of time. I'm not looking to do this to make a quick buck, okay? This is, I'm trying to protect my money over period, long periods of time. Okay, so getting back to the, to the types of silver I buy. The second form of silver I buy are silver bars, okay? I have a silver bar with me right here. You can see they're kind of cool. I have a silver bar, all right? The price above spot, so or the official going rate, uh, is usually the, the, the lowest. So you pay like the lowest kind of provision for this type of silver, okay? So you really get the most bang for your buck with this. That said, from my experience, they're not hard to sell. Some people say they're hard to sell. In my experience, they're not hard to sell. Um, but it is important you pay attention to the producer of the bar, okay? Some governments produce silver bars, like the Canadian Mint, uh, they produce uh, silver bars and they really have a great reputation. I mean, those things, you have no problem, buy, uh, you know, finding them, well, maybe finding them, but selling them, you'd have no issue at all. Uh, that said, I put a link in the description below to a bullion directory uh, where I check the ratings and reviews for different dealers or private mints. This one, for example, is issued by what's called Emirates Gold. They had a five-star rating. Um, you can see this is silver 999, so this is 99.9% .9 pure silver, so you look at the, the rating on there, and it comes with, there's a serial number on it, and when you buy a bar like this, you also get a card um, to verify the serial number that's on your bar, okay? And now, the last, the last type of silver I have, don't really buy it, but I have are old coins made of silver. Okay, these are these are dimes. This is known kind of as uh, uh, junk silver is what they call it. So uh, specifically, I, I keep my eye out for American dimes. All right, produced before 1965 because they contain 90% silver. So these ones, one of these have Roosevelt on them, 1957. Okay. I don't necessarily recommend going your, out of uh, your way. I mean, really, I, you have to make your own mind up. I don't recommend anything, but when it comes to me, I don't go out of my way to buy coins like this. Uh, but if you find one, make sure you, you, you put it away somewhere safe. You know, pop it in your pocket. Don't spend it because it's 90% silver. It's worth much more than a dime, okay? Now... We've considered silver pretty extensively. We've talked a lot about silver, so I want to quickly cover gold. Gold is another asset I have been buying for more than 11 years, and the way I buy it and collect it, it's very similar to that of silver, okay? First, I set aside a budget to buy gold, and I spread my purchases over the year. Again, I don't buy everything at once, okay? I buy the average price over time 
as again, listen, that's the safest way for me to do it because uh, I ensure that over that long period of time I, I get a return because you don't know, you never know. I never know when the highs are going to be. I never know when the lows are going to be. You know, if, if gold recently just hit above $2,000 an ounce, I don't know how much higher it's going to go. I don't know if it's not going to take a break and dip down a bit you know, over the next six months or so. I don't know these things, but that's why I buy it over time because I know that, that the, looking at the, the, the long term over the horizon, the only way for it is up as inflation increases. Okay? All right, now, charts. I love charts, I love numbers, okay? So, when looking at the return here, we see that it too acts like silver. Even though right now we are experiencing all-time highs for gold, as inflation is doing its job of destroying the value of money, uh, it's, it's, it's acting very much like silver. And again, this is just, it just shows you how important it is and how important it's been for me to preserve my hard-earned money um, by, by getting assets like this. So, when it comes to gold, there are basically two types to buy. Okay, you can get bullion coins and bars. Bo bullion coins and bars. Again, I don't buy any of the collector stuff, the rare coin, this, any. I, I'm not interested in that because I'm interested in buying the gold at the lowest price possible. Uh, jewelry, although cool to wear, I mean, I don't treat that as a good investment for me personally. Okay, the way I invest in gold, again, is I buy bullion, specifically coins. And I specifically buy coins like this. Okay. Oh, can you? Okay. This is a Canadian maple leaf, one ounce of 99.99% gold. It's recognizable, very recognizable, and very easy to sell in the future. Okay. When purchasing coins, there is one important thing to remember, though. Okay. Not all coins are the same. American Eagle coins. Canadian Maple Leaf coins and Australian Kangaroo coins. You guys can Google all of this stuff, by the way, that I'm saying. You know, like I said, do your own research. They're all very popular coins, those three coins, okay? And they're all 100% pure gold or 99.99% pure gold, okay? There are, however, South African Kruger Rands, also very popular, okay? This is what they look like. Okay, you guys see that picture up there? Bring the picture up. Okay, so. Uh, they are 92% gold and they are good coins, easily bought and sold, absolutely have a fantastic rep reputation. I personally, I don't buy them. I personally, I don't buy them because I prefer to have pure gold coins. I want as much bang for my buck as possible and I buy specifically the Maple Leafs because usually the, the fee that you have to pay for a dealer is a little bit lower than what you pay on an American Eagle, but American Eagles are all awesome coins, yeah? They're just, I mean, they're like the standard, right? So they're gonna be a little more expensive. All right, <clears throat> when it comes to buying bars, there are bars, they vary in size from one gram all the way up to kilogram bars, maybe even bigger. I, I, I really don't make purchases of gold that are that big, yeah? So I'm not really experienced with the larger bars. If you're looking for smaller bars, I mean, what I buy is, I buy Swiss gold um, branded, it's called Pomp Suisse. I'll put it in the description below so you can Google it if you're interested in checking what, out what that is exactly. Uh, Pomp Suisse, I've had 20 gram bars of Pomp Suisse. Uh, very recognizable, again, very easy to sell later on because it's a recognizable brand of gold. It's known, people know they can trust it. Okay, so silver, gold, great, we got it behind us. Now the exciting part. This is the part I like. I'm getting excited as we go on. Good. Gotta keep it together. So, now we're gonna talk about Bitcoin. Yes, I buy Bitcoin. And I love Bitcoin. Let me tell you why. So, Bitcoin is like gold and silver in a way, okay? The supply doesn't increase dramatically over time like the supply of money. like. Like, really. <laughs> and in fact, what I like most about Bitcoin is that it is much more liquid than silver and gold. Much easier to buy and sell, okay? I can buy it 
and sell it from trusted exchanges in a matter of seconds. I can divide one Bitcoin into a hundred million Satoshis and send the one Satoshi to a hundred million people if I had to do it. Okay? I can't really do that with, a, with gold or a silver bar. <clears throat> uh, and the other thing is I can safely store it digitally, right? Without the need of a safe uh, or a bank safety deposit box. It's easy for me to bring around. Yeah? Uh, if I had, you know, kilo bars of gold, which I don't, but if I did, you know, it, might be a bit cumbersome trying to travel around with them. Whereas having money in Bitcoin, uh, it's very easy to travel around with and it's very easy to get it in different locations. Okay, now, I know what some of you are thinking. Didn't Bitcoin just crash? Isn't it the end of Bitcoin? It's risky and Elon Musk tweet can destroy it overnight. Uh, yeah, the price of Bitcoin has fallen from its all-time high this year and, uh, and that's the truth. But again, that's why I don't buy all at once. Truth be told, I did buy some Bitcoin when the price was at its tippy top earlier this year. Uh, like I said, I don't know when the peaks and the, you know, when the highs and the lows are going to be, but since I buy little parts of Bitcoin over time, the average price that I've actually paid for my Bitcoin is, is really not that bad at all. Okay, so let's take a look at Bitcoin. Let's take a look at how Bitcoin has performed over time. As you can see, Bitcoin has those peaks and valleys, but the overall direction over time is skewed upwards. And that's what captured my interest in Bitcoin. Now I see countries like El Salvador adopting it as legal tender. And I think, wow, the future has got to be really bright here in the sense that the adoption for Bitcoin is below 2% of the world population today. So if we're going to be living in a future where 50, 60% of people are going to need to have Bitcoin, hold Bitcoin, try to procure themselves Bitcoin. Well, I want to hold Bitcoin and I want to hold it right now. Uh, and, and, and that's exactly why I buy it to protect myself against inflation, convert my cash. That's just going to burn itself over time because of the, uh, the, the growing money supply. And I convert it into Bitcoin. Uh, also, I look at what people who I think are smarter than me and better investors, uh, what are they doing? Uh, billionaires like Paul Tudor Jones, Kathy Wood of ARK Invest, Michael Saylor. I mean, you know, a lot of people uh, think of Michael Saylor just as this crazy Bitcoin guy, but this guy is like really uh, a genius in financial strategy. And, you know, all three of them see Bitcoin as either a hedge to inflation that's coming because everybody sees inflation on the horizon. Everybody. Or actually in the case of Michael Saylor, he sees it as the future of money and wealth preservation. And it, it's hard for me to disagree. I might not be a maximalist like him, but I do think it's definitely going to play an important role in the future. And in fact, actually the argument that best convinces me to Bitcoin, and I heard it recently, Michael Saylor was the one who said it. Uh, and it's why I'm still investing in Bitcoin and I'm still dollar cost averaging in. I'm buying small pieces over time to get that average price of Bitcoin over time. And it's because of how the digital revolution, it changed music, books, gaming, dating, you name it. If I can have all of that on my mobile phone, why wouldn't I also want to have some part of my wealth stored there? to be able to easily transfer to different places should I need to do it, okay? I, of course I would want that. I don't carry around compact discs anymore for music. I don't carry around books to read. I have everything I need in one place. And why not my personal property or, or wealth too? And, and that was the question I heard Michael Saylor recently pose and it's a, it's a darn good question, right? So I am confident that it will be one of the best ways to protect my money from inflation over time. Uh, I will make another video about crypto and how I invest. I don't only buy Bitcoin, but Bitcoin, of course, is the majority of what I buy. And I will give some price predictions in those later videos. So really stay tuned for that. Hopefully a lot of you are going to be interested in seeing that and seeing my take and my numbers on how I break things down to um, support the logic behind a lot of my um, uh, predictions. So the grand finale, my absolute favorite asset and the one that for me has been a sure bet 
every time I've made it, and that's real estate. Now, I know what you're thinking, bald guy, real estate is expensive. I get it. And in a hot market, it might not make sense to buy. I, I get that. I'm asking myself that same question right now. But what I tell myself at the end of the day is that I, I should treat real estate like all my other investments and slowly accumulate it over time. That will be the best strategy to protect my money from inflation and benefit from the average increase in property prices over time. Okay, so what kind of real estate do I like? Very simple answer. Uh, I'm not a guy who owns hundreds of properties or is involved in high value real estate deals. That's not me. I'm just a regular bald guy, okay? What I like and what I've bought are things that I think will actually and always be in demand. Uh, okay, so, so what is that exactly? Well, I look at things in very simple terms, all right? I figure there will always be people who need somewhere to live on a budget. Makes sense, I, 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 I think. That also fits right into the law that the lower the price is for something, the more demand there will be for it, okay? We discussed kind of the opposite earlier. So, that's why the first property I like to, to buy is a small single bedroom or studio apartments located in growing cities. Okay, that last part's really important. Demographics have been shifting for the last several years. People are moving from rural areas to big cities. And which cities uh, in any given country are the biggest winners are becoming very obvious right now. So you can actually just, just look at where the populations in whatever country it is you live in are, are moving to. Those are the best bets to, bet, to actually place right now from my point of view, and, and I'm placing those bets. So as population increases in a given geographical area, the demand for housing naturally increases as well. So the only logical thing that will happen is that the price of my real estate is going up over time. That in itself protects me from inflation and from the properties I've owned, I've totally protected myself from inflation. Uh, now, who is moving to these up and coming cities? I'll tell you right now, it's not my grandma and grandpa. It's younger people who are just getting started or are students and they need something affordable. That's why a six bedroom house, it doesn't fit the bill. It doesn't cut it for me. So I like small apartments because the people moving to the city are demanding exactly that and they will continue to demand it for years to come. Especially, especially when they're located near public transportation hubs because these young people sometimes, especially now, uh, are not driving. A lot of young people are not getting driver's licenses like they used to. So being close to a public transportation hub is also a major advantage. Okay? So to wrap things up, it's been long. Uh, so I appreciate it if you've made it this far. Thank you so much. Uh, higher rates of inflation are coming and they will be here to stay until some serious reforms are made on how we manage the supply of money. Uh, some people are talking about deflation around the corner, but deflation might just be a temporary correction uh, to longer term inf inflation. And, and that's the way I see it, and that's why I invest uh, uh, my cash in the things that I invested into, the things that I've presented to you today. So please remember, uh, I am trying to protect myself and my savings from being inflated into nothing. And, and what I do to protect myself is that I buy assets. The assets I like most are silver and gold bullion. Remember, I don't like collector coins. Uh, I love Bitcoin as a wealth preservation mechanism of the future. I think it's fantastic and the future is so bright for Bitcoin. Uh, and more than anything, I, I love real estate. I buy real estate. It's the best um, because it, it, it's the best generator of passive income. <clears throat> of those, uh, of those uh, four assets that I mentioned. Uh, there will be more detailed videos on each individual topic coming in the future. So again, please subscribe for more content uh, and, uh, and, and follow me and figure out how this bald guy makes money, all right? Uh, I wish you all the best, take care, stay tuned, and see you in the next one. Bye.